Welcome back. In this video I start making the engine mounts to mount the LS engine into the airboat. As a spoiler alert, this is part one of two. The completed mounts will be finished in a following video. So this structure will all be made out of stainless steel tubing. Most of it will be one inch and I, there is also some three quarter inch tubing. So a big part of this will be getting the height of the engine where I want it. I have the transom cut down, but I'm actually going to lower it more. I'm going to bring it down to 18 inches. To bolt it to the floor, I have this uh, flat bar of stainless steel, and I've welded basically uh, four of these pieces, and they fit over the aluminum channel. And then bolts will pass through the stainless steel and through the channel. Uh, and uh, mount it to the uh, basically to the stringers and as you can see it'll be bolted to the boat in four locations so the first step was to connect these mounting locations and I just used some three quarter inch uh, stainless tubing And there the rearmost mounts are connected. I tacked it all in place while I was in the boat and then took it out to finish the bead. And right around now, my left hand started getting pretty warm. So this is the gearbox that I'm using. It's a ballistic drive. So it's a gear drive made by ballistic. Uh, it's a billet aluminum piece. I had it anodized black. I think it's a pretty nice looking unit. It appears to be well made. I'm pretty happy with it. As you can see, the rotation is opposite of the engine rotation. And I had this made with a 2.5 gear ratio that should put the LS engine into a optimal RPM range. For the propeller, it's a carbon fiber piece. It's made by Whirlwind. This is the super wide 80 inch prop. It's a, I'll be using it as a three blade setup. It came with a, quite a nice uh, billet hub. So these are pretty big props and it should take a fair amount of power to spin it. Apparently it'd be 450 to 500 horsepower required to spin it as a three blade setup. So that's what I plan on making with the engine. I'm hoping with this large, super wide blade setup I'll be able to spin the prop relatively slowly and hopefully that helps decrease some of the noise. So here's the gear drive mounted on the back of the 5.3 engine that I'll be using. Right now the engine is completely stock but I'll be doing some upgrades in an upcoming video. With the hub and one of the blades connected, I can start measuring how high the motor needs to be. So the goal is to have the tip of the blade 12 inches from the bottom of the hull. That will put me within 6 inches of the 18 inches on the transom. So time to start cutting and notching tubing. This is my tubing notcher. I have it uh, initially mounted in the drill press. I have to say I'm not very happy with this notcher at all. 
It's just cheap though, so I guess you get what you pay for. So on the gear drive, there's these stainless steel mounts. They have a Delrin insert. I connected the mounts with a piece of tubing, just with tack welds. Now I'm remo removing the Delrin inserts so that I can complete a full bead without melting them. So obviously building these motor mounts, I want everything to be square and to be level. The problem is, is hanging the motor off the cherry picker here. Uh, it's not entirely level. Um, so the way I'm going to get around this is I'll just be careful with uh, cutting everything the same length, lots of measuring. And then when it comes down to actually mounting it in the, in the boat, what my plan is, is I'm going to combine basically make a cradle that will work as the surrogate for the motor so i'm going to come uh, connect this back mount to these front mounts i'll connect that with tubing i'll make sure that it's parallel with the uh with the what the engine will be and that way i can just use the cradle build around that and know that if the cradle is parallel then the engine will be as well So because I wasn't happy with my notching setup, I thought I would make some changes. I mounted it on the vise, hoping that using a portable drill would, would help a bit. It didn't really. One of the problems with this setup is the way it's clamped in is a bit hokey. As you can see, it slipped there. If I crank it down really tight, it works better, but it's, uh, it's just not the best setup. However, it does work okay. It's able to make a notch that's good enough for what I need. Initially, I was using the electric Milwaukee drill, which was great, but it did try to break my wrist once, so I switched over to uh, an older half-inch chuck drill with uh, two handles. It was more stable, it was a bit more comfortable to use, although I think it does spin a little bit too fast. One of the problems with this notcher is it wasn't making completely perpendicular notches. So in order to fix that, I just took a little bit of time to set it up. Now, reading the gauge there, if I put it to zero, that's where it would be off. So it just took a couple minutes to measure it, and what I found is actually it should be dialed back to about four degrees. If I have it set to four degrees, 
that's actually zero and it actually does a better job making perpendicular notches. Okay, back to cutting and welding. So here I'm making the uh, components of the cradle. This is the one of the front mounts. with the mounts bolted to the urethane motor mounts. With the cradle coming together I did measure those bars quite carefully and they are uh, parallel with the line of the engine. I connected them with this curved piece not really for any reason except for I had this curved piece in my scrap pile and it does actually help clear the oil pan. So it was all tacked in place fitting onto the engine and then I took it off for final welding. This is the main part of the cradle, uh, completely welded. So this now, as I mentioned earlier, will be a surrogate for the engine. So I can mount this in the boat, and I know that if this is parallel and square in the boat, the engine will be as well. And so this is basically a very simple jig that I made to hold it in place to get my measurements and to get it squared up. With the rear tacked in place, I basically went through the same process at the front as well, making sure everything is square. And that's a plumb bob I made a long time ago in grade 9 metalworking. Thanks, Swanee. With the main supports coming together here. Again everything is measured multiple times to be as square and as level as possible.
With all the supports removed, this is the basic structure of, of the engine mounts. What will be next is I'll make a, quite a lot of cross braces and gussets and supports to make it as strong as possible. It has to support the weight of the engine and gearbox along with a thrust of you know 400 500 horsepower so uh, it's gonna have to be plenty strong. And I took it out of the boat just for some uh, finished welding to uh, complete the beads and then I'll actually put it back in and uh, fabricate out the new cross braces. And that all will be coming up in the next video. Thanks for watching.